me a ghost of lost tube and much like a broken record stuck on repeat it has again been a while since my last video uh, earlier this year I moved from the deep south USA to just south of the Alps in Europe so I won't bore you really with the details of all my stress and anxiety, but if you're wondering, it is completely overwhelming to move to another continent, and especially where you don't speak the native tongue. And before anyone tries to say, oh well, most people speak some English in Europe, um, that's a bit of an overstatement and it's really the most applicable to the big metro or tourist areas. So in a nutshell, the move didn't have any catastrophes, but I'm very much still feeling uh, some unexpected baggage from it. Um, it has not been the easiest move that I've done. Uh, in the end of spring, uh, when I was still living in a hotel, I had some spare time on my hands because we didn't have a car and I didn't have my driver's license <laughs> yet either. Um, I was, you know, just kind of putzing on Instagram and on Ravelry and a lot of uh, the Indie Yarn Dyers were starting to do pre-sales for their advent calendars and um, for those that aren't really into knitting, um, it's kind of like a, it's becoming more of like a big thing where Indie Yarn Dyers will make advent calendars for December and uh, you'll get individual uh, mini schemes of yarn that you can open every day leading up to the 25th. And so, uh, and also a lot of podcasters will do vlogs uh, in December. And I remember uh, last December watching some of the podcasters doing their vlogs with their advent calendars. And you know, you're like, oh, I wanna do that. And so I was starting to think about if I wanted to invest in it and with the dyers that I was seeing, I just, I couldn't commit to it because I didn't feel confident that I was going to like all of the yarn and really I felt like me personally, I would have a hard time using those small amounts of yarn um, just because I'm particular with things I like to make and colors and all that kind of stuff. So I was thinking, well, maybe I should just kind of 
find some other small things and make my own advent and it wouldn't be a complete surprise but that kind of works better for me anyway because I'm not really a big fan of surprises and especially if I'm going to put money out towards something you know I don't like to settle and I like to like what I get. As I was looking for things online so I was like maybe I'll do half the days and then I was thinking oh why do I have to do it in December? Because like most of you basic witches out there, I love autumn. So I was thinking, why don't I make my own little countdown for Halloween instead? So I made my own little haunt down to Halloween. So that's going to be coming up. And so this is just a big... Autumn is my favorite, and so is making things, and let me just spew that out in any way I can video. Um, I knew that I wouldn't be able to do like a daily or even like a weekly vlog situation, um, so this video is going to end up to be kind of vlog, um, kind of sit down. Um, and I know most of you are here for cross stitch and it is in the video. Um, it's probably not the first thing you're going to see, but it will be in the video. So grab your favorite beverage and grab a whip and hope you enjoy. I have a shawl pattern that I want to knit up and before I can get started, well I also have a sweater pattern that I want to get started on, but before I can do either of those, I need to make a new project bag. So, this is the first project bag that I made, and it fit for what I was working on, but it's a little bit small, and it was a, like a prototype seat, like it's completely just like floppy, it doesn't stand up on its own, but I just kind of like took what I knew about just making like a simple boxed bag see here and I just made my own dimensions to fit the fabric that I had this was actually a tote bag before but then I cut it up and made it into this project bag but anyway so this is not a good size for me anymore for the project that I want to work on so gotta make a new one So, I've had this fabric for years. This was some of the first quilting fabric that I got when I was first teaching myself how to quilt. And I've just been holding on to it, not really sure in what to use it for, and I kind of didn't want to cut into it just yet. So I figured I'd use this for the main print. And then I purchased this scrap piece of waxed canvas before moving. And so I think I'm gonna do like a two-tone, like have this be the bottom part of the bag. And it's pretty stiff right now, but I think once I start cutting and manipulating and sewing with it and everything, it, it's gonna soften up a bit and it's gonna, I think, it will get kind of like crinkle, crackle marks in it, um, which will look really nice. And then I have these two zippers. I think I want to use this gray one, um, even though, it, I mean, I guess it goes, but, you know, it's not going to blend in like this white one, but I've had uh, these zippers for, again, a few years now accidentally actually I thought when I was ordering them I was just getting like one of each for a specific project I had in mind but I actually ended up getting the five pack of each so now I have all these zippers so I'm trying to make use of them so that's what I'm gonna get started on I this is actually gonna be the first time that I start or I um, use my sewing machine since moving and 
I'm a little nervous. I have a transformer so that it will, theoretically, it will work. Um, I'm just not sure if it's going to work as well as when I was still in the States and I'm a little nervous, you know, to see if it works when I go back to the States. But if it, if it doesn't work back home, then it doesn't work and I gotta get a new one, but we'll see. We'll see if he behaves himself. I'll just leave him, leave him be back there. All right, so I think the last thing that I showed was the beginnings of a new knitting project bag. And so I have that finished now. Let's put it up. Oh, there he goes. And ta da! Let me get back here. There we go. See, it's quite large, but I'm very happy with it. It's just the same on the back as well. And I'm really happy about, well, most of my zippering this time. Usually I struggle a little bit with keeping the just keeping things consistent, like a consistent width um, from the zipper to the top of the fabric. Um, I don't know, I really do think it's just part of my machine. It, my machine's pretty basic, uh, and so, you know, just gotta work with its kinks, and, you know, most of the time it comes out pretty good. I did kind of screw up um, on the ends of where the zipper tabs are. I just always kind of, I don't know, it always gets, gets like, I get it so that I'm not getting the zipper tab in the seam, but it is like so close. And so it just kind of ends up getting like all like scrunched in and it, they're not the best, but again, personal use, I don't care. I'm happy with it. So. Um, I don't think, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, I should have watched my last clip, but I didn't. Um, this is a Leah Duncan fabric from her Gramercy line. Um, this is really old. This is probably from, I want to say 2014. Um, and then this waxed canvas, it's from A.L. Francis Textiles on Etsy. Um, and this was, they don't always have remnant pieces, but um, I was able to snag a remnant piece instead of having to buy a, a larger cut before I knew if I liked it, how it was to work with. Um, I actually really like it. I mean, it was definitely stiff when I was working with it, and I was being a little bit more ginger like handling it more gingerly than I really needed to. I probably should have done some more scrunching it up and it would have given it more of a distressed look than what it actually has right now. But um, yeah, I do like it. It was, it was kind of difficult to flip this inside out when I was done sewing it. Um, and part of what made flipping it out hard was I only have or fill 50 weight thread and if I could easily get it I would probably go up to 40 weight thread just because this canvas is pretty heavy duty and I think the 40 weight would be just a little bit added structure and security um, on those seams I was really nervous about popping the seams with the 50 weight thread so that was another part of what made it hard to flip out because I was being extra careful with it but anyways it yeah it's really nice and big and let's see is there anything else I want to mention I don't think so the lining I just used a plain canvas um, not wax canvas just plain canvas uh, let's see I, I didn't want uh, a, a print inside because I 
I feel like sometimes it's kind of distracting to have the inside of your bag be really busy or have it be really dark. Uh, makes it harder to just see if you're rummaging for things. So I kept it plain. The other thing that I'll mention that I forgot to do is I was going to add a handle into the seam of this outside part, but I forgot. I just got really into the zone of sewing the bag. I'm going to have to find some other kind of like hardware installation option that I can do for a handle. All right, so now I can show you my new knitting start. Well, I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to start the Andrea Mowry bobble shawl. I'm so excited. I, when she released this, I, was, I just fell in love with it. And let me just tell you, so the whole, yes, I think someone's hungry. He needs his lunch. I'm gonna go feed him, otherwise he's gonna bother me the rest of the time. What kind of facilitating, facilitated getting or doing this project was, it was my first skein of yarn from an actual brick and mortar store uh, yarn shop. Uh, I got it in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, it's right out, like in outside of uh, Asheville, North Carolina. It's a Yushishita, I think that's how you say it. Um, just merino singles. It's called Grounded. There are a lot of other colorful Yushitita uh, skeins there, but I was so new at the time. This was back in the this from the summer of 2007. <gasps> Stop it. This was back in the summer of 2017, so brand new to knitting. Didn't really know if I had a preference for singles versus sock yarn. Um, didn't really know how I wanted to use the colors or I, I brand new didn't know it didn't know what I liked or anything so I was a little nervous to get something really colorful so I went ahead and got this neutral but it still had that pop of burnt orange and then I got home and it just sat. I, as I started knitting and I was seeing more projects and different yarn and how the colors play as you knit it up, I just, I started to be really unsure about the skein. And it got to a point where I was actually pretty close to thinking about trying to sell this because I was thinking, I'm, I don't know that I'm going to like this knit up because I'd seen other a few other skeins on Ravelry and it looked like this burnt orange like it would make it kind of like longish streaks and so I and not like speckles like I think I prefer speckles well I definitely prefer speckling over like a variegated yarn so I was just really unsure about this, but then Andrew Mowry came out with her bobble shawl and I was like, I think I could use this in that. I found perfect accompanying colors to go with this for that shawl. So this is a full merino, 100% uh, merino single. The rest of these are Madeline Tosh, Tosh Mo Light and they are 80% merino and 20% kid mohair. So I'm really excited about what that's going to be like knitting up with. Beautiful, isn't it? 
So yes, this does look rather Halloween-y, but oh well. Um, I don't know, I still like it. But so what I'm going to do is these are the two like accent colors that are used and then um, the pattern actually has two skeins of the same color for the rest of it and so instead of doing two skeins of the same I'm going to be kind of alternating between these two. I'm going to use this one in the two striped sections and then I think also in the brioche uh, edging on it and then I'm going to use this one for the lace section. Hopefully I like it. You know I'm still a little bit worried about the that orange that burnt orange kind of streaking and looking kind of but that's what I'm gonna do so really excited to see all these come together okay so I haven't yet done any stitching or knitting um, I've been having some tendonitis just somewhere and so I just gave it up cold turkey and that's what kind of led me to make the bag and because I was bored and had time because I wasn't stitching or knitting I've gone back into quilting and I've had a quilt all kitted and ready to go and it's just kind of been sitting for a while because I've had other things taking up my interest so because I wasn't using my hands for more finer repetitive movements I was able to then kind of dive into sewing because it's not the same kind of you know physical strain uh, if you want to call it um, on your hands and body it's different so <laughs> you know you, you still can uh, you know get sore and whatever from different aspects of quilting but it's in a different way so yeah I'm not following an actual pattern but I'm using um, this is going to be one of the blocks that I use from here this is love of quilting it's January February 2017 um, so I'm going to be using this block as well as it's a block from this this is the loyal union sampler book it's a block in here, but these blocks are designed to be um, unfinished. I think they're six and a half by six and a half blocks, and a lot of them have either templates or I think there's even some that have some foundation paper piecing. So the block that I wanted to use, uh, it did have some templates that you needed and but so because it had templates and it wasn't even the right finish size that I needed I kind of graphed it out and essentially it's the same but some of the angles and stuff are uh, different I mean everything's either you know a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle because that's what I can easily do with my tools and it makes it less of a headache than trying to, you know, get more complicated than, than that. So, so that's what I have. I've got two practice blocks that I can show you right now. So here's the first practice block. And that was the block from the magazine. And then this is the modified block that I made. So, so now that I have those practice blocks down and I for the most part I've worked out any kinks that came up as I was piecing it because it's been a while since I've pieced a full-size quilt. Um, you know I've done some small quilting projects 
but the last time I put together a quilt top was two to three years ago. So it's been a while and you know I'm working with really nice quality fabrics and so I want to make sure that I'm cutting it right and I'm sewing it right so that everything is coming out the way it's supposed to and I'm not ending up with a lot of waste. So, but I've got most of the pieces cut out for one of the blocks. I still have the second block that I still need to cut out, but I'll just show a couple of um, some of them. Well, a lot of them are my favorite fabrics in here, but I'll just show a couple of ones that I love. This is this is actually Tula Pink. It's from her Home from the Holidays line. Just some green plaid. Um, got some of this. This is one of the fabrics that I got from one of the shops that Diana and I went to for a quilt shop hop. Um, a couple autumns ago. This is one of the ones I grabbed. She grabbed a different color in this and, and then it kind of made me look at a different color and I was like I can't pass that up. So I got it. I don't remember the name of that. Diana will remember though. Uh, let's see what else. I've got this. It's a cotton and steel. Um, oop, Tula pink. I think this one is called Bats in the Belfry. Um, you know, when you pull it out, it's pretty, but then you get up close and there are little bats kind of scattered all throughout it. And then this one. This is a V and Christensen. Is her name Vanessa? I'm not sure. But it's one of the fabrics from the ombre colors that she does. So that's pretty much what I've got going on right now. Um, you know, again, because I've cold turkey cut knitting and stitching, hopefully my hands can start to take on a little bit more activity because I've got some really great stitches that I want to get back to. Um, you know, I really want to get back to my Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. Uh, and I've got some, I've got some new starts coming. I'm really excited about them. I think, let's see, I've had a few, um, patterns just sitting in my stash for a while and so I think now's the time um, to get them going. So I'll show one for now, a little teaser of what I'll be getting into, but it's the Stacy, Na Stacy Nash Primitives Blackwater Hollow. And I'm going to be, I'll be using this legacy from Picture This Plus fabric. So that's it for now, but I'll be back again with more things that I'm up to.
my ghosts and ghouls. It is almost Halloween and I have some things to show you. So I think I'll start with my knitting stuff. First I want to show um, a couple of my uh, haunt down to Halloween frizzies uh, that are actually going to go together. So all of this is going to be a hat. Uh, this is going to be this is a little pom-pom and then I'm going to hold these two together and so it'll be a little fuzzy. Uh, it's going to be the Kodak, I think that's the name, the Kodak hat by um, Caitlin Hunter. That's it. So all I need to get are the needles and I can get going on that. Okay, my bobble shawl. It's been cursed from the very beginning. <laughs> I started it uh, over at Orietta's and I should have known better that I cannot, in my repertoire of activities that I can multitask with, crafting is not one of them, especially in a social setting. And so I screwed it up immediately. I did the wrong, I put the colors in the wrong sequence and I'm pretty sure that I had missed some increases. So I had to start that over. I hadn't gone very far, um, but I had to start that over. And I got to the brioche section and it looked awful. Well, it didn't look awful. It just looked kind of sloppy and it was really loose. And then I got to the lace section and I kept getting my stitch count off every row. And so I was always having to like double back. And I just, I didn't get very far on that either because I just got fed up. So I ripped back all the brioche. I did all the brioche in a smaller size smaller size needle so I got that looking better and then I started doing the lace and that's where I'm at my I'm at my quandary now this is where we're at right now so still at the fairly beginning ish part um, and I think I'm gonna rip it out and completely start over it's just in this lace section with that, um, this thread, or this, um, yarn, the grounded Yushitita. I'm just, it looks better than I thought it would knit up, but I'm still just, I don't think I'm gonna like it that much when it's all said and done if I use this yarn in this lace section. So before I really decided to just rip it all out, I decided to knit the grounded with the black and a little bit of the the rye bourbon, the Madeline Tosh solids to see what the stripe sections would look like with it and I think I'm gonna like that a lot better so here's my little sample bit bef before I completely ripped it all out so what I'm gonna do instead is use the grounded in this part instead of this off-white antler and then I'm gonna use the antler for this lace section so it'll be all one color you'll be able to see the lace more and it won't have it won't be too busy in this section um, so yeah it's just really hard to know how something's gonna look when it's multicolored <laughs> um, so you know aside from my color indecision um, I'm really liking it so it does suck a bit that I'm gonna have to do all of this over again but 
it'll be worth it so that I like the end product and actually want to wear it. So I'm okay with it, but I'm just going to put it aside for a little bit. So for the quilting, the quilt that I'm working on, um, there's really nothing of note to report. Um, everything's going pretty good. I'm still, I've only gotten three or four blocks done and then some other smaller pieces to blocks. Uh, you know, so far so good. Everything's going right. Everything's getting to their correct measurements. Um, I did realize that I do not have enough of my solid gray fabric, so I'm gonna have to order more, but I can still keep going on it for a little while. So I'll show a couple blocks that I have. This was my most recent one. And one more for good measure. So, yep, that's what I've got for the quilt right now. Nothing really interesting to say about it except that it's going. It's just, you know, I take my time with quilting. I definitely take my time and I'm probably much slower than a lot of people, but it helps me get the results that I'm looking for. Now we have all cross stitch. So, so the one new start the Stacy Nash Blackwater Hollow. Turns out I did not start that. I remembered I was ironing the fabric, getting it all prepped and finding my starting points. And I realized that my intent was that I was going to use leftover threads from Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain to incorporate into that so that I didn't, so that I didn't have to buy all new hand dyed, uh, threads for it, but also so that I didn't have to just use DMC if I didn't want to. Um, but my Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain is nowhere near being even done with some colors. So that one didn't get started. But a few others did. But I think I will start... I'm going to start with showing... A little bit of progress that I made on Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. So just for reference this is the full chart. I'm, I'm only doing the bottom half on this piece of fabric though. Alright so it doesn't immediately look like I've done a whole lot. What I've done I worked on some of this top border and added a few bets. I added a pumpkin, this pumpkin, a bird, and I worked on filling in some of this tombstone here. I worked on adding some more leaves to the tree. So not as much as I thought I would get done because I kind of got sidetracked with my new starts and got really involved with those. One of the first new starts that I had was this uh, Scattered Seed Sampler Sweet Sentiment. I think I had gotten this, um, I think it came out last fall during market. So, uh, I am either using the DMC alternative it has or whatever I have that's closest to the color. So, just a little bit. Um, and this is on a uh, picture of this plus ale 32 count. So it's 2 over 2. And then the next new start I had was 1612 by the Primitive Needle. Um, this was a piece uh, for the Pendle Witches, I believe. Still have some live threads, but this is on the other half of that ale. And again, um, I'm just using threads that I already have that are 
approximates that are close to what is used in the chart. I'm really liking how it's coming out. So, there you go. I, got, I really lucked out that um, I had this fabric in that I could squeeze um, those two pieces on and uh, I'm actually going to be good on my margins. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. This next start was a chart that I had gotten at House Tyrol. Uh, it's in Williamsburg, Virginia. I got it last Christmas. And I've been wanting to do a Vera Landon sampler for a long time. They're just, yeah, I just love them so much. And so this is the one that I have. It's Permanent of Copenhagen, and it's a Museum Cell 1826. So this one, I have had a hard time putting it down. So I've got um, my name covered up just because, you know, this is entirely public, so any fool can come across this video, so keeping my privacy where I can. But I just love how this is coming out. And so I'm a little close on my margins. Uh, I'm right at about two inches, and I generally like to be at two and a half to three. But um, by keeping my margins a little bit tighter for my comfort, I was able to keep this on a fat quarter of fabric. So this fabric is one from The Haunt Down, and it is, what is it? It's an r, &R Reproductions, I think it's Beach Winter. I think and the thread is the anchor black it's the number is four zero three um, I wanted to use anchor because uh, compared to DMC the anchor has kind of a matte finish and I kind of liked that better than a shinier black for this piece so I originally wanted to do this on more of a medium uh, brown color, but I was just really struggling to find a fabric that I was confident that I was gonna like, because I, you know, I gotta buy everything online, so I'm at the mercy of the photos, and we all know that those photos aren't exactly accurate, either because the photo isn't accurate, or because of, you know, just dye variations. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I'm happy with it. The black looks really great, and the design looks really great on it, but I think the next sampler, I will try and pick a, a darker fabric color than this one. And I've got one last new start, and this was another chart. Yes, this was a chart from, the last chart from the Haunt Down, and it is Our House by The Good Huswife. So, the picture's <laughs> deceiving in terms of colors. Uh, if you look at the grass... If you see that grass, um, you know, the top hill grass, you can tell it's kind of browny, yellowy brown, but the bottom grass, it does look like it's of the green family. You know, it's a very yellow uh, green, but it, it reads green, at least to my eyes. When I pulled the colors, both grasses are definitely brown so uh, and you know some of the the oranges are quite bright and so I'm kind of playing with the colors um, 
just to either work with my fabric or just to suit my fancy. So this is what I have so far. Um, that yellow leaf that is a slight color change. It's pretty similar, but just you know, ever so slightly different. Um, and this is on a Lakeside Linen 36 count. It's vintage cedar plank. I think I'm going to really enjoy working on this one uh, for the rest of fall. Um, I really just, I really love this Lakeside Linen vintage, vintage cedar plank. It's kind of a gray, gray taupe kind of color. It's beautiful. And I am doing this 2 over 2 on 36 count, but I think because I'm using DMC and I'm not doing the stitches individually, um, I feel like the stitches are looking really nice so far. Um, I do notice sometimes, I have some other 36 count where I've done hand dyed threads and you're doing one stitch at a time. and. I don't know, sometimes it just doesn't look, always look that good or depending on the 36 count fabric you have, um, sometimes the stitches can get kind of like bunched and like look a little too full, uh, but I don't know, I'm really liking it on this Lakeside Linen. Alright, so that is all she wrote. Um, there's still one month left. Hello. You had to wait, make one last appearance. I don't know if you can hear, but he's purring very loudly right now. He's probably going, Mom, give me some freaking lunch. I'm hungry. So we still have another month left of autumn if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, still plenty of time to get in some more autumn crafting. Um, hope your autumn has been going really well and you've been able to get out or stay in and do the things that you want to do. <laughs> um, I, I hope all of you have a great rest of the year in case I don't see you again and I will see you next time.